Welcome back to Run the Atlas. Today I'm talking about one of my favorite wine regions to visit and one of the top producing wine regions in the world for Pinot Noir. This is the Willamette Valley. Today I'm going to tell you the things that you need to know before visiting here, some information about the wineries, and some of the things that we learned from our multiple visits to this region. So stay tuned to the end to get all of the information for your trip and be sure to like and subscribe down below for many more travel videos. Okay, so let's set the scene. I'll put the map of the Willamette Valley right here. This is a well-established wine region. It's roughly 150 miles long. It's known for its Pinot Noirs and it has more than 600 wineries. So first of all, the scenery here is very laid back. There's beautiful lush rolling hills, picturesque country back roads that are really fun to drive through and there's old growth trees, and it's filled with lots of simple pleasures. So let's get right into the wine. I have an example of one of the bottles that we tried while visiting here, and this is a Pinot Noir. This is from the Dundee Hills, and it's from a vineyard called Nysa Vineyards, and I'm gonna link them down below where you can buy and try your own at home but we definitely recommend visiting the vineyards in person. A tasting here will roughly run you about 20 to $35, depending on the type of tasting that you're doing, whether it's a reserve blend or not. The two grapes that are very prominent here are the Pinot Noir and the Pinot Gris. They're grown here due to the colder climate, which these two grapes do very well in this area. You can also meet the wine owners and the wine makers, which is very frequent here. Almost every vineyard we went to, we met either someone from the family or the winemaker themselves. Some of our favorite vineyards to visit include the Willamette Valley Vineyards. This is on a massive estate. They have a beautiful indoor and outdoor tasting room, and it's one of the best places to start your trip. We also visited Ponzi, which is in the Tulatin Valley, and this is also another great one. It started off as a family-owned vineyard as well. Left Coast is one of my favorites of all time. The owners actually gave us a tour of the vineyard and the acres in their vintage Jeep, which was so cool and so memorable. They're also famous for their white Pinot Noir, so we recommend you try that. It's one of their best-selling Pinot Noirs and it has hints of honeysuckle, which makes it perfect for summertime. We'd love to know what your favorite wineries are in the Willamette Valley, so comment below. In terms of travel throughout the region, since it's such a large region of ground, we recommend that you focus on a few vineyards during your visit and take your own private car or hire a tour company. One of the great things about Oregon State, you don't have to pump your own gas here. Another great thing about taking your own car is that there's many places that you can stop off and take in the views. We noticed that along the roads, there were beautiful you pick em farms where you could stop and pick your own berries, which is very unique. So the best time to visit if you're here for the wineries is between September and early November. This is harvest season. The vineyards are very active during this time. They're picking the grapes, bottling, crushing the grapes, and you can see a lot of the action happening. You can see the grapes actually on the vines. Now, if you're here in December and January, the vines will be bare, so it might not be quite as picturesque. The summer also provides really great weather. You'll get more sunny days in 70 degree weather. Whereas if you're here in December and January, those are the two snowiest periods. And you may even experience a little bit of snow on the ground while you're here. Throughout the year, be sure to bring a light raincoat as rain is very, very common in Oregon State, especially in this region. We also recommend visiting between March and April. This is tulip season, and they have a number of tulip farms here. You can go to the one in Woodburn, which is on the way to Salem, and you'll just find yourself surrounded in a sea of flowers. It kind of feels like you're in Holland. So let's talk a little bit about Salem. This is the capital of Oregon. This is an area where you'll find a lot of old neighborhoods. It has kind of an East Coast feel, the first national bank is its only skyscraper and it's 11 stories high. It's a very walkable and manageable downtown. Many of the homes in the historic district were built between 1860 and 1937. So you'll see historic colonial Gothic revival and English cottage style homes. We stopped and took photos at multiple of the homes because we were just blown away at how cool the architecture was here. You also find the Capitol building here. And what's interesting is it doesn't have a dome on top like some of the other state capitals. It's actually a marble building in Art Deco style. 
and you'll find the Oregon Pioneer on top in a gilded bronze statue. What's interesting too is that the first two Capitol buildings actually burned down. So the present one was built in 1936. You may be wondering what is there to do in this region outside of wine. So if you're not into the whole wine experience, there's a few things that you can do. There's immense adventure with hiking. We really loved the Silver Falls State Park. This is one of Oregon's top attractions. And it's so cool because you can actually walk around the waterfall, which is something we've never seen before. There's a beautiful seven and a half mile trail that goes from waterfall to waterfall. And it is like being in Fern Gully. It is the most lush, almost rainforest-like experience. So definitely bring your camera. There's waterfall vistas, densely blanketed forests, and you'll notice a lot of beautiful flora and fauna in this area. One of the great benefits of visiting Oregon as well is this is a no sales tax state. So if you're looking to go out to eat or do a little shopping spree, be sure to take advantage of the no sales tax, which will save you a bundle. You may be wondering, how much does a Pinot Noir go for? Well, this one is from a small production of a thousand cases only. So this one goes from about 75 to 105, but it really depends from winery to winery. And we recommend that you talk to the winemaker and find out what they're most proud of producing that year and definitely bring home some bottles because some of these wines you cannot even get in the stores. So there you have it. I hope that you get a chance to visit the Willamette Valley. Be sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned for many more travel videos. And if you have a request for a certain area that you'd like us to do a review on, comment below. Cheers.